In this lesson, we're going to expand on string manipulation techniques and discuss regular expressions. So what are regular expressions? Well, they're a special language for describing patterns in strings. Now we're going to discuss the basics, but the topic itself requires a whole video course. And that's because regular expressions are very succinct and short, but they're also very powerful. But they can also be incredibly difficult to understand. Many developers don't know about them, or they avoid them completely because it looks like witchcraft. But they are very useful and can save hours of coding time. All I would suggest is that you try and keep them reasonably simple because you won't understand what you've done within a few days. Now you should note that JavaScript supports Perl compatible regular expressions. Now Perl is another language. It's not used that much these days, but several other languages copied its regular expression syntax, including PHP, C Sharp, Java, Python, and Ruby. So if you can grasp the basics of regular expressions in JavaScript, you can adapt your knowledge to other languages accordingly. So let's dive in at the deep end and assume you want to check the validity of an email address that the user has entered. Now we only want to check whether it's formatted correctly. We don't want to start contacting mail servers or checking DNS entries or anything too complicated. So we know that an email address starts with a name. Then it's followed by an at sign and followed by a domain name, which may have any number of period separated strings. Now there are actually far more rules than that, but we'll keep it simple for the moment. Now if you were going to write code to check those rules, you'd probably split the email string into multiple substrings and then check each one individually. It would probably be a dozen or so lines of code, but here's how it looks as a regular expression. Now it's very short, but it implements all those rules we've just discussed. But looking at this code, how would you actually know whether it was checking for an email? At first glance, it's complete gobbledygook. So I'm going to try and explain it by breaking each section down. Now a regular expression is delimited by slashes at the start and end. Here and here. The power symbol means look at the start of the string. And the dollar symbol means look at the end which means we want to match the full string using this code. Now, first of all, we have some code in square brackets. Now this denotes a set of valid characters. And in this case, we're permitting any character from A to Z, zero to nine, a period, an underscore, a percentage sign, or a dash. Now the following plus sign indicates that we can have at least one or more of those characters. So that's the email name defined. We now follow this with the at symbol. And of course that is required in all email addresses. So now we define our domain. Again, we're using square brackets and we're stating we're happy for any character from A to Z, zero to nine, a period or a dash. Again, the plus symbol indicates that we must have at least one or more of those characters. Now the last section of code denotes the domain suffix such as .com or .net. So we must have a period, but in regular expressions, a period normally means that it can be any character. So we need to escape this with a backslash to indicate that we actually want a period character itself. Now the next set of square brackets says that we want characters from A to Z. And the squiggly brackets indicate that we only want between two and four of them. And that's it. We have a regular expression to check for an email address. Now it's certainly not perfect since we can define a domain with two adjacent period characters. And there are plenty of other mistakes, but it should catch 99% of all user entry problems. So we'll make it a bit simpler now. Let's assume we've got a piece of text and we want to search for the word JavaScript throughout the whole string. Now we're not worried about case sensitivity, so the word can be defined in any mixture. And also you want to capture text where a space has been inadvertently put between the words Java and script. So this is the regular expression you could use. It defines Java and script 
and in the center we have a slash s. Now this denotes a white space character, such as a space or a tab. This is followed by an asterisk, which means that it will find any number of space characters, including none. Finally, we have a couple of switches at the end. The first is I, and this means that our expression is not case sensitive. Secondly, there's G, which means global. We want to locate every instance and not just the first. Now, defining this in JavaScript can be done in one of two ways. The first is simply to use the regular expression directly, as denoted by the start and end slashes. The second is to create a new regex object. Now this takes the expression as a string without the delimiting slashes and it's followed by another string with the switches. Now both of these expressions are identical so you would normally use the first. But the regex object allows you to build regular expressions in a situation where what you're looking for could change. So for example this code builds the expression using predefined variables. So it's going to look for live script, but it could just as easily look for JavaScript or any other type. So here we have a little code. We're defining a string which we want to evaluate. And this is followed by our regular expression. Now this searches for all references to JavaScript, no matter how it's written. Now the easiest test we can perform is called test. And unlike the other methods we'll see in a moment, it's a method of the regular expression object itself. So we pass the string we want to evaluate to the regex test method, and it returns either true or false accordingly. The next method we'll look at is search. Now this is a method of the string object. In other words, we have our string, we run the search method and we pass the regular expression as a parameter. Now the search method returns the character index of the first match found. Now in this case it's zero because there's a match right at the start of our string. And remember that string characters are indexed from zero upwards. Next we'll look at match. Again, this is a method of the string object and we pass the irregular expression into it. Now match returns an array containing all the matches found. So here we have the first Java space script and the second Java script, which doesn't have an uppercase S. Now note that if you omit the G switch here, it can only return the first match. Now we've already looked at the string split method before. It splits a string into an array when it's passed a separator value. Now in the previous lesson, we passed a separator as a string, like a comma. But you can also define a regular expression which determines where the split should occur. So in this example, we return an array with three items. An empty string, because JavaScript is found right at the start. Then we have this substring followed by this substring. And finally, we have replace, which is probably the most useful method of all. It replaces a match with another string, so we can correct our JavaScript word so it's used consistently throughout the text. So, in effect, we've used a fuzzy match which is replaced accordingly. Now sometimes it's necessary to modify what's in a string rather than replace it. So let's assume we want to put HTML italic tags around is not and is. Now we can't actually do that with two regular expressions because the replacement for is would match it in two locations. In other words, this is here would be matched twice. So we can write a single regular expression which looks for either string. The bar character in the center denotes a logical or. So our regular expression will find the substring is not or is. 
But of course, when we've come to adding our EM tags, we don't know which match has occurred. So we don't know what to replace. Now, fortunately, there's an easy solution. Anything within normal brackets is remembered within our regular expression. We can now refer to what was matched using the dollar one parameter. And if we had more than two matches within our regular expression, then we could use dollar two and so on. So our replacement now contains whatever the match was. So in the first match, is not is replaced, and then the second match, is is replaced. So now you know the basics of regular expressions. It's certainly not everything, and you could spend your life devoted to pattern matching. But even if they scare the hell out of you now, just be aware that they're in JavaScript and can be used. Now in the Working Files Chapter 8 folder, you'll find several links to resources, tutorials, and online tools. Now these tools are invaluable because they allow you to experiment with regular expressions before you commit to any coding. So you can quickly change an expression to view its result. Now one of the best I found is at the address here. Now if we use this tool, you can see we're doing the replace we saw earlier. So here's the pattern, here's the replacement, and here's our subject. So it highlights all the matches it finds. It shows us the code that we would actually use in JavaScript. And it also displays the result. And we can easily experiment with this. So we could change Java to ECMA. And we'll see that everything updates instantly.